Hey all, welcome to Home School and coming back to class 8th science third chapter that is synthetic fibers and plastics. In my previous video, I gave you introduction about the chapter and we studied about two types of fibers. One is natural fibers and artificial fibers and uh, we also discussed uh, something about fibers, what actually fiber is made up of, how the chemical substances are there inside a fiber, all that we discussed. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about types of artificial fibers. Okay, so most of the things uh, that we see around belong to a category of artificial fibers. So in my previous class, I discussed about that also, right? So there are various types of artificial fibers. So four major types we are going to discuss. Okay, so the first one is let us learn about rayon, second one nylon, then polyester, right? So this is a very common word that we use it in our day to day life. And fourth one, this is also very important, acrylics, acrylics, okay. So let us understand about each and every uh, type of artificial fiber in detail. I'm coming to the first variety, okay. I'm talking about the first variety, rayon. So rayon is famously called as artificial silk. Okay, so it is famously called with the name artificial silk. Actually, most of the cloth varieties or most of the, uh, you know, what carpets, bed sheets and you know, all of them are made up of with a, a particular fiber called rayon, right? And it looks like a silk. So why do we call rayon as artificial silk? Because it looks like silk and you know how silk is produced right we learned uh, in your previous classes also i mean in class 7 we learned that silk is obtained or it is formed from silk worms and you know the generation or the manufacturing of silk was discovered in a country called china right all that we studied and you know uh, the process is very difficult okay? extracting silk from silkworm and culturing silkworm and doing lots of chemical processing you know all that takes lots of time and and it involves lots of issues like cost okay it's very costly and and you know to buy a silk saree is not a common thing we have to spend lots of money right so that's why you know man started thinking of artificial silk so he invented rayon it just looks like a silk right it is so soft like a silk and you know what it shines like a silk so that's the reason it is called with the name artificial silk okay so now how does this artificial silk is made you know this is made from wood pulp this is made from wood pulp say you can get one doubt here see wood pulp wood is a natural thing say we are getting this fibers from wood itself which is natural then why do we say this is an example for artificial fiber yes because you know what you will get the main raw material from wood pulp no doubt but after that you will add lots of chemicals to that and you will do lots of chemical reactions you are going to modify uh, the chemicals which are present in the wood completely okay by doing lots of processing so that's the reason we say this is an example for artificial fibers Okay, so though we get it from wood pulp, we don't call it as natural, we call it as artificial is because lots of chemical reactions are involved in getting rayon from wood pulp. Okay, so fine. And where do we use rayon? You know what, when this rayon, when this rayon is mixed with cotton, okay, when rayon is mixed with cotton, you can manufacture bed sheets. So whatever bed sheets we use at home, no, you can touch it. You, you don't feel that cloth completely cotton, right? You, you will feel it slightly soft like silk also. It's because the rayon fibers are mixed with cotton fibers. So this is how bed sheets are made. And normally when rayon, when rayon is mixed with wool, 
that can be used that fabric can be used for making carpets okay so this is how usually in bed sheets and carpets we will use or we will find rayon fibers okay but not in a pure form it will get mixed with cotton in bed sheets and it will get mixed with wool in carpets okay and not only uh, bed sheets and carpets we will uh, we will get rayon dress materials also right we we have rayon shirts uh, you know what for girls uh, lots of their clothing fabric is made up of with rayon only right so you again have varieties of rayon fibers which are used in various uh, industries and used for various purposes okay so this is all about our artificial silk rayon remember which is called as artificial silk it is rayon okay fine and now let us move on to second variety of artificial fiber that is nylon guys this nylon is uh, completely prepared from uh, you know the chemicals itself so it, it doesn't have any raw material from plants or animals at least here in rayon uh, your main raw material was from plant right but here in case of nylon it is made from it is made from coal water and air okay so these were the raw materials used for the manufacture of nylon so it is 100% artificial or 100% man made fiber i can say okay fine and you know what one special property of nylon is it is very strong okay it is very much elastic and uh, you know what it is very much light i mean light weight okay light in the sense what it's very much lightweight it's not at all heavy and also it is lustrous so what do you mean by lustrous shiny okay so have you all uh, have a shiny cloth in your almara say definitely uh, the shiny silk type of cloth belong to nylon fibers okay so these are the special properties you have for nylon uh you know fibers that's the reason they are used for making cloth used for making cloths okay so various cloths uh, what people wear and they are also used for making socks okay socks as well as tooth brushes tooth brushes you know what tooth brushes will have those bristles right uh, that thread like uh, bristles and those bristles are actually made up of nylon fibers because they are very much strong isn't it and they are very much elastic also so that's the reason because of these properties our tooth brushes are also made up of uh, you know this nylon fibers and next is you know uh, the bags the school bags that you carry you know even uh, those bags do have the nylon fibers because they are very much strong and elastic okay and they are very much light also and few of the curtains okay so uh, the, the curtains which are very much light the curtains which are very much very much shiny uh, can have a nylon fibers in them okay so uh, this is all about the nylon so what's the difference between rayon and nylon rayon the main raw material is from plant source but here in the nylon uh, the raw materials uh, the starting materials are completely uh, you know chemicals that is coal water and air nothing is natural here okay so this is all about rayon and nylon and now let us go for polyester so this word that is polyester is a common word that we hear uh, day to day life right see polyester actually you know what uh, there is a small chemical substance called esters so many esters many esters will combine to form to form polyester okay see uh, the word can be broken into two parts one is poly the other one is ester right so what do you mean by this poly means what many poly in the sense many so many ester uh, molecules will combine to form a long chain called polyester 
Okay, so now what do you mean by this ester? Ester is a chemical substance. It is a chemical substance. Okay, can you all imagine where is esters naturally present? They are present in fruits. Okay, say uh, uh, the emmy taste or that very much, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we can say, a beautiful flavor of fruits is due to presence of esters in them. Okay, say for example, apple smells in a different way, orange smells in a different way, strawberry has a different flavor, vanilla has a different flavor. You know, why they have different flavors and why the flavor is so good to smell and taste? It's because of the presence of esters. Okay, so, uh, you know, th these esters can artificially uh, be manufactured in the chemical laboratories. Okay, uh, the esters which are present in fruits and vegetables are natural, clear. But these esters can artificially be made in a chemical laboratories. Say, first they will uh, manufacture this chemical called ester. Later, they will try to combine one ester molecule with another, one with another by some chemical reaction and it forms a long chain. That long chain we will call it as a polyester. Okay. So, this polyester is very famous. It is used for making. Okay. It is used for uh, making, for making dresses for making dress materials right for girls uh, we will uh, wear various forms of dresses you know dress materials shirts etc you must have heard polyester shirt polyester material uh, if you don't know what uh, is this polyester you can go and ask your mother uh, just to show some polyester cloth okay so when you touch a polyester cloth you know what it do not wrinkle it do not wrinkle Okay, you no need to iron the cloth. You can just wash and wear it off. No need to iron. Okay, uh, you don't find any foldings in a cloth. So, that's why I use the word. It will not wrinkle. Okay, and then it is durable. So, what do you mean by durable? Uh, you can use it for a longer time. I mean that the cloth will not easily tear. You can't tear the cloth that easily. Okay. So, that's why we say it is durable. And another thing is it is easy to wash. It is easy to wash. So, that's why uh, you know what polyester is the fiber which is used for making dress material, shirts and other forms of uh, clothing. Okay. Fine. And one more thing is, there are two forms or I can say two types of polyesters. Okay. There are two types of polyesters. Uh, under that, the first one is terylene. Terylene is one variety. The other one is, have you heard of the word pet? Okay. Say your mothers will buy pet jars and pet containers to store uh, rice, sugar and various other cereals, pulses or whatever. So, what do you mean by pet? Pet is nothing but polyethylene, polyethylene terephthalate. Phthalate. Okay. So, here P is silent actually. So, it is polyethylene terephthalate. P is silent. Okay. So, that is called PET. These are the two types of polyesters. Okay. So, ethylene, uh, terylene is actually a very thin fibers. Very, very thin fibers and PET fibers. So, this variety of polyesters can be used for making utensils for making utensils okay so uh, utensils in the sense big containers or jars that can be used for storing uh, rice sugar etc clear so this is all about polyester now we will go for the last variety acrylic see guys acrylics are actually uh, very very simple you know uh, they they are called as artificial wool artificial wool right say uh, where do you get wool from you will get it from animals right you will get wool wool is a skin of an animal isn't it it's a fur uh, type of thing that you get it from animals can you think of various cloths 
that can be made from wool yes it's sweater shawls blankets all of them can be made from wool right but you know what woolen cloths are uh, very much expensive and making woolen cloth is also very much expensive and a hard process so that's why uh, you know man has invented alternative form of wool that is acrylic okay say uh, acrylics are used in making it is used in making sweaters sweaters shawls okay blankets etc clear and it can be available in various colors also you can mold i mean you can change the acrylic uh, fibers uh, however you want okay they are very much flexible and you know what even acrylic fibers are durable that means uh, you can get these things for many days you know without much damage right and they are easy to maintain you know what usually woolen things are difficult to maintain right it's because you know when you don't wash them when you don't maintain them you will observe the accumulation of microorganisms in that fungus you know uh, all that microorganisms can uh, come and stay in that wool clear so that's the reason you must maintain them carefully whereas artificial wool you know you you don't find much problems with this artificial wool uh, there is no accumulation of microorganisms and all okay so it is very uh, easy to maintain i can also write the word easy to maintain okay so that's the reason nowadays uh, the natural wool has been replaced by artificial wool uh, which includes the acrylic fibers in it okay so that's all about different types of artificial fibers so in my next video i will tell you the different characteristics of artificial fibers say we use artificial fibers for various purposes is because they have some special characters some special properties let us discuss about those special properties in detail that's in my next video so till then take care revise the concepts carefully and do subscribe our channel to learn the concepts in a easiest way and in a detailed way thank you so much